presents Culture Shock with your hosts Mané, Giselle, Lore, and B. Let's, Let's get started. Ya fuimos a hablar. And welcome, hello, and welcome to another session of Culture Shock. So it's kind of a sad show because it's like, how do you say? Second. It's the second, second to last yeah. show. Almost We're almost over with the show, and it's kind of <coughs> sad. And also, one of our main hosts is really sick, so sign of depression. I hope <laughs> you get better. So today we're talking about something really. Uh, when I was doing some research, it was it turned out to be really interesting. We're talking about cultural appropriation. Do you know what is that? Mm, well, I think it's like when you take some aspects of other culture. Yeah. But I'm not sure if it can be always negative or it can if it can be like a positive thing. Sometimes. It's mainly negative because the if you do it in an well, in the best way you can reach that new tradition, it's called acculturation. If you don't reach acculturation, then it's cultural appropriation, and it's something not that that good. What is acculturation, Victor? <coughs> acculturation is when you add aspects of another culture to your own culture, but you do it uh, very closely to the real meaning of it. All right. And cultural appropriation is... What's happening in our globalized world when we see like different things from other cultures and we tend to repeat it but without knowing the real meaning of it. Okay, yeah, so cultural appropriation is like borrow like another culture's Boring. Yeah, like another culture's festivities. For example, Halloween. In Mexico we sometimes like not all of us celebrate Halloween but most of us do and it doesn't really have to do anything with our culture. I think that only happens in main cities. I mean in rural places they don't celebrate Halloween. Yeah. There is still yeah. the day of the dead. All right, but uh, why I Okay, yeah, but why do we like I just big cities? Your argument. No, down. no, no. no. <laughs> you don't know what to say. <laughs> but why do you think we like celebrate it in Mm, big cities why it only happens in big cities probably like one of the reasons can be because in like tv or movies you see how they celebrate in other places for example halloween so you feel like it's something that you want to know what it feels like to go trick-or-treating and go asking for calaveritas <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah for example like in big in bigger cities we have more access to information and the like internet and yeah and most of the things <coughs> we are exposed is american like american is the biggest uh, us american please us american <laughs> it's like the biggest uh, sponsored uh i forgot how to say it the like the biggest corporation of sponsoring so for example if we talk about christmas <coughs> here in mexico we technically don't have santa claus but we have like Christmas specials in TV and then we want to like be visited by Santa Claus because even though it's not part of our culture but it's Ameri the show is American. Do you know where it comes from? Where? Santa Claus? I think Finland? Germany. But he was green, right? Yeah. Do you know the story? I don't really but <laughs> I know that Santa Claus comes from this guy that visits a house where children are sleeping in Christmas or something and then Coke saw it and he changed the image to this grandpa with a long um, gray bear beard. Yes. <coughs> and the red suit and Coca spread it all over the globe. Yeah, so that is. How, how do you. Is that cultural appropriation? I don't think it is, right? Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. In Germany, they have this tradition and this reason why this guy visits them. Mm -hmm. But Coke. Definitely lost the tradition just to promote uh, 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 soda. So, <coughs> and it kind of changed the meaning, right? Yeah, definitely. Because Santa Claus before it was like kind of a saint, right? Saint Nicholas. Yes, yeah, he was Saint Nicholas. Yeah, he wasn't just a guy living on the North Pole and dedicating his life to give uh, children presents. 
Like, he had a meaning, but because of the cultural appropriation, it just changed completely the meaning. For example, Cinco de Mayo in, in USA. <laughs> Cinco de Drinco. How do you celebrate uh, Cinco de Mayo, Edin? With guacamole. Basically, you get drunk. Yes. That's what you do. I mean, they drink and dress in culturally insensitive costumes, like stereotypes of Mexicans. Like really? Like those types of things? Yes. Wow. And then, like, uh, controversy in frat houses that have had these parties. Okay. Wow. I want to go to one of those. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I know it's not good, but I really I want to go there and yeah. see and how it can. In the U.S., they believe that practically Cinco de Mayo is the day that Mexico got free from Spain, which is something that <laughs> didn't really happen that way. No. So that's cultural appropriation because they lost the meaning of the battle and stuff. And also in Mexico, because the real hero of the battle was Porfirio Diaz. Why? Because Zaragoza wasn't even in the battle. And there are some books that say that Zaragoza was in... I don't know how to say it. Well, he was getting drunk in some bar. Uh -huh. And Porfirio Diaz was the one that led the battle and make Mexicans win. That's what a book says. So... Oh, come on. Like, no, okay. Those kind of <laughs> books are mainly... Like... Okay. <laughs> maybe he, maybe Zaragoza wasn't in a bar, but for sure he wasn't in the battle. And okay, Porfirio I can't believe Diaz, that, yeah. Porfirio Diaz was the real hero there. But no one recognizes him. Okay, that's part of cultural appropriation. Exactly. We'll sing the meaning. Do you have another examples of cultural appropriation? Wait. Two different... Examples? Oh, sorry. I just got a lot of soda. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of examples. And even, like, the simplest thing, for for example, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, having rastas, rastras, rastas. What are they called in English? Cornrows. 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 Oh, no, no, no. Dreadlocks. What? Dreadlocks? Dreadlocks. Dreadlocks. Okay. <laughs> well, those things... <laughs> They have a meaning, which I'm looking in over the internet, <laughs> but they have a meaning and now everyone wants to have one. So that's also cultural appropriation because you lose the real meaning of that type style of hair and then you just want it because it's like fashion or what's... Like a trend. Like a trend. Yes. Yeah. That's a trend. Yeah, something I've been realizing uh, lately is that everything is part of cultural appropriation. <laughs> For example, uh, like I think last year or two years ago, did you hear about the ice bucket challenge? Yes, it was like for uh, donation also. Yeah, it was for uh, donating to the research of this illness, but I forgot the name. It's with the bones, like a bones disease. I heard that uh. it's like the pain that Stephen Hawking yes. feels. Yeah. Something like that. And... It was just between famous people with economic resources. The ones that didn't want to donate, they had to throw water like over themselves. Cold water. Cold water to feel the pain that these uh, these people like feel. Oh, uh, yeah. But then everyone wanted to do it. Yeah. And exactly. I had a birthday party that day. Well, <laughs> during that period. And I entered to this surprise party, and the first thing that happened was everyone shouted, you haven't done it, and they threw uh, balloons with water to myself with a lot of cubetas, how do you say it? Buckets. Buckets. Buckets with cold water, and I was like, oh my god. And I didn't even <laughs> want to do it because I knew the real meaning, and I couldn't afford a donation, but also I didn't want to waste water for something that was just a trend. Exactly, and that is part of cultural appropriation because then everybody started to make it as a... Like, as something popular. Yeah, just as a game when it wasn't really like that. It was like for a cause, a donation. Yeah, I had friends too in Instagram. They used to tag me like, I dominate Lorde. I have <laughs> to do the ice bucket challenge. I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. Yes, of course. I knew what it was for too. Exactly, and you cannot afford like paying so much money. So, <laughs> and uh, for example, what about artists? Like, artists have a lot of cultural appropriation. For example, um, I Miley don't Cyrus? Yeah. She's one that I was reading that in a performance she did the typical twerking. 
Uh -huh. But this twerking comes from a minority group in West Africa, I think. And it became like very control controversial. Controversial. Yeah, controversial because she that was like she was taking over some like getting credit over something she she didn't do. It came from from a minority group in in West Africa. And she's like mostly one of the principal artists that does those type of things. Yeah, for example Katy Perry. Katy okay. Perry is like uh, have you seen the video about Dark Horse? Yes, but <laughs> like the whole video it's in Egypt and like it's located in Egypt and it's like this they tradition. They have the pyramids and the Yeah, they have the pyramids yeah. and How this tradition the about the, the gods. Sphinx. Sphinx. Sphinx? 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 Yes. Okay. With the Sphinx. But like she's like putting everything like cultural beside like she's just put throwing things that look uh Egyptian and may not be really respectful. Yes. For example, there's a show that it has been recently out. It's called Iron Fist. Have you heard of it? No. I know that you love that series, but but no, no, it has, has to bring it to the show. <laughs> really? No, no, you no, no because it has cultural appropriation of also, because like the it's supposed to be like kind of ninja thing, but they threw everything that looks Asian to the show. So like the swords and ninjas, and even though like it, they came from different cultures they put it like all together they mixed it all up. yeah and that is also cultural appropriation we'll discuss about that later uh we have to go to a commercial so stay with us to hear more about cultural appropriation y el Departamento de Capacitación y Desarrollo de Talentos en colaboración con Brigadas Móviles de Cultura AC te invitan los meses de marzo, abril y mayo al ciclo de conferencias y talleres Desarrollo de Competencias desarrollo Multiculturales, de competencias multiculturales. Tal, tal. Un proyecto de la UPAEF para impulsar el desarrollo de competencias y responder a las necesidades del mundo Cupo Limitado Para mayores informes Marca el 2299-400, extensión 7711, o escríbenos a mariadelourdes.salvador.paep.mx UPAEP, rumbo al 50 aniversario. Misión. Misión. Crear corrientes de pensamiento y formar líderes que transformen a la sociedad en la búsqueda de la verdad, integrando fe, ciencia y vida. Valores. Junto a la verdad, el bien y la belleza, nuestra universidad sostiene como valores rectores la dignidad de la persona humana, la libertad, la solidaridad, la subsidiariedad, la congruencia, el respeto, el amor y la justicia. Visión. Somos una comunidad universitaria fraterna, congruente, alegre y comprometida, que es referente en la conjunción del pensamiento humanista, cristiano y las ciencias, que forma integralmente líderes con alta calidad profesional y compromiso social. Contribuye a la transformación de la sociedad con propuestas pertinentes, orientadas a la consecución del bien común. Tiene presencia e influencia en los ámbitos local, regional, nacional e internacional. Centra la gestión en la persona y optimiza los recursos al servicio de la misión institucional. Líneas rectoras. Atreverse a vivir congruentemente nuestra identidad, como ejemplo de virtud en el servicio, con respeto y amor al prójimo, para la transformación social en orden al bien común. Privilegiar a través de la academia la formación humanista cristiana en busca de la excelencia científica y profesional con pensamiento universal y trascendencia social. Crear sistemas académicos de auténtica pertinencia social a través de la docencia, investigación y extensión para enriquecer la cultura y participar en la solución de los problemas fundamentales del país. Involucrarse en la formación y desarrollo intercultural de la comunidad universitaria a través de ámbitos y vínculos de internacionalización. 
Lograr ambientes de confianza, colaboración y servicio dentro de una cultura de austeridad, transparencia y evaluación. UFAEP, rumbo al 50 aniversario. back here in our show and we were discussing different things that <coughs> are cultural appropriation so Lori, another thing that you have in your mind as an example of cultural appropriation while we are waiting for our host today and our special very special guest well like um my <laughs> teacher was talking to us about how in the united states a lot of companies like famous companies that had to do with beer and those type of things that are related to Mexican food or drinks, like did a promotion to celebrate this date, but it was like actually so they could sell more. So that would be like a, a good example of culture appropriation. Also I'm thinking about, I don't know, here eating with <laughs> chopsticks. chopsticks. I, I mean it's something important for them. And for us, it's like, oh, I'm fancy, I can eat with just two sticks. <laughs> so I think that's also like cultural appropriation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, in our globalized world, everything can be cultural appropriation. Yes, like, that's what, that was what I was everything. telling you. Everything is a cultural appropriation nowadays. So it's actually a good thing or it's bad all the time? I mean, culture is never going to be absolutely pure. Even Mexican culture is not pure because it got mixed up with Spanish culture and European, French, well, European and culture from different parts of the world. So culture is never going to be absolutely pure. And what about if I adopt uh, an aspect of a culture, even though I know the meaning and I want to do it because of the meaning, it's still bad? then it wouldn't be cultural appropriation. It could be more like acculturation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so, um, as Cinco de Mayo is coming, do you have, like, anything to do? Are we going to do something big, like Americans do? USA Americans do? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, we're just going to pass it like a normal day? I mean, it's not going to be normal because... I'm not going to go to the university, that's something good. <laughs> something that happens every day, every Cinco de Mayo. But honestly, I don't do anything outstanding that day. Just a day to rest for me. A lot of people have this, well, have the tradition of going to the parade. So that's something that happens here. That like, do happen, go to the parade. USA Americans believe that this date is the independence of Mexico. Is it true? No, but they celebrated because it was politically better for them winning that battle. Otherwise, French guys were going to invade the US, but the US couldn't do anything because they were in the in the Guerra de Secesión, <coughs> in the Civil War. They had the civil war, so they couldn't defend themselves. And that's why they helped the Mexican army to stop France. So that's why... Oh, another reason they celebrated. No. Yeah. Did we have U.S. American help? Benito Juarez uh, got help from the U.S. No. And also in this battle... History. Right? With, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with this treaty of Machado, something like that, Benito Juarez told the U.S. that if the U.S. Uh, helped him winning the the war, then they would have this part of Mexico called Istmo de Tehuantepec. Mm -hmm. That was going to be territory from the U.S. Wow. So Juarez That's is not so as good as everyone <laughs> wants. <laughs> That's why I love Porfirio Diaz. But yeah. <laughs> I'm so impressed. Every day you learn something new. <laughs> All right. Yeah, for sure. So that's another reason why they celebrated. Because it was better for them. And France did not invade them. Cool. But they they have like this really huge party and we don't actually have that. Like we don't necessarily celebrate. We just like 
have free day of school and have a parade and that's it and the f fair 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 no fair how do you say fair yeah fair <laughs> the fair the fair, the fair. Yeah, the fair. <laughs> you mix up ah, also we have these representations of the battle people going to los fuertes do we yeah they do it wow i'm <laughs> such also a they, i'm such a bad they show it on tv <laughs> The representation of the battle, and it's not like nationwide. It's just like here in Puebla, like other states don't celebrate it. Yeah, just us. Yeah, I didn't know we have like representations. Yeah, I'm such a terrible Mexican. <laughs> okay, so how can we avoid cultural appropriation? Or is there a way here. to avoid? Yeah, there's a way to avoid it, but I've got it here. So just let me. Extract the main ideas because I don't want to read everything. So just say something. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are here in the radio booth. Okay, let it. <laughs> in uh, the first meantime. one, don't dress up <laughs> as an ethnic stereotype. Sorry. Don't dress up as uh, an ethnic stereotype. I don't know, going to the shop and buy kimono just because you want to have one, you should not do it. Yeah, for example, as Erin uh, was saying, like on the Cinco de Mayo, usually Americans. U.S. Americans dress like how do they dress? Like with with a sombrero, uh, with mustaches and ponchos. We don't even use ponchos. Did you ever dress like that? Oh. Not not even in your childhood. <laughs> I bet in her college years yeah. she did. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I swear. <laughs> okay, what else? Also, don't use like sacred artifacts or ac as accessories. In the type of collares, how do you say necklaces, necklaces, necklace, yeah, necklace and stuff like that. Don't use it just because you want, because they have this sacred meaning. Mm -hmm. So like dressing up as an Indian. Home. Exactly. Yeah. Also, like this guy from YMCA, he was dressed up as an Indian. And the name of the song is YMCA. That's not the name of the group. No, uh, village people. Village people. <laughs> Sorry, I just <laughs> confused. <laughs> those names every day <laughs> what else <laughs> okay so uh while victor is still like getting the main ideas like what Isn't other like, type of music what do you mean like rap um and stuff yeah like those type of songs i don't it's like let me see if i get this through like Eminem singing rap, it started like music from people of a certain minority, if we can say it, and then Eminem, who is outside that minority, uses it to express himself. Say that with like Justin Timberlake and Justin Bieber. Also, it can be. Yeah, or uh, I forgot the name. This artist that used used to make like Hindi music, but he was American, and like he just didn't know about the culture he was just like making music because it was fun it was a guy yes but i forgot his name mm. no? i think so i'm not really sure but there was this artist that was making music just because it sounded fun and that that's the only reason that he made it also here's an interesting uh, concept that you should not forget that appropriation is not substitute for diversity if I dress up like someone from China, that doesn't mean that I'm going diverse in the world. So you should uh, have that in mind. Did you get it? No, give me another example. <laughs> uh, if I want to dress up like someone from Peru, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that I'm going into real diversity, cultural diversity. Yeah, I mean, it's like, now look at me, I'm like co globally conscious. and Exactly, uh, yeah. you should have that in mind. All right. <laughs> What else? Um, have you ever done that? I have right now that Erin said as dressing as an Indian in like Halloween. I have done it. I have dressed. As I get, them, get close to the, to the microphone. Oh. Yeah, I have <laughs> dressed like in Halloween as an Indian with my... But I think it was in the correct way because I put like a, sh like a, a short shirt and it had like tiritas cortadas stripes some stripes and my my face like painted but i don't think indian people actually dress like that so that would probably be one 
I think I have some sometimes. And I think I was like doing it in a negative way. Also, here's another thing that if you are going to, I don't know, sell something that comes from another culture, like if you are a dress designer and you sell your dresses that have the style of uh, people from H India, then you should give credit to this culture, not like, oh, well, look at what just came out from my mind. You should give credit. Yeah. Don't steal ideas and propose them like your own. Plagiarism. Plagiarism. <laughs> 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 Topical. <laughs> For example, one of the qu main questions you have to ask if you want to avoid cultural appropriation is to what ethnic racial culture group does the, this practice or artifact belong? Okay? Don't wear it just because it's eccentric or because it's exotic. Just try to find the history behind that artifact, okay? Just don't use it because, oh, it's from another country and it looks cool. That's why I'm going to use it. Yep. Okay, so we have to go to commercials, but we'll be back with an interview with Veronica, and she will tell us something about more about it. So let's go into commercials. y el Departamento de Capacitación y Desarrollo de Talentos en colaboración con Brigadas Móviles de Cultura AC te invita a los meses de marzo, abril y mayo al ciclo de conferencias y talleres Desarrollo de Competencias desarrollo Multiculturales, de competencias multiculturales tal, tal. Un proyecto de la UPAEF para impulsar el desarrollo de competencias y responder a las necesidades del mundo Cupo limitado Para mayores informes Marca el 2299-400, extensión 7711, o escríbenos a mariadelourdes.salvador.paef.mx ¿Te gustaría crear o mejorar dispositivos para el servicio de seres vivos, tales como prótesis, órtesis e instrumental biomédico? ¿Qué estás esperando? La Escuela de Ingeniería Biónica de la UPAEM te invita a conocer cómo un ingeniero biónico domina y aplica las habilidades de elementos mecánicos, electrónicos y biológicos en las personas. Conoce nuestro plan de estudios conformado por nueve cuatrimestres con líneas terminales en diseño y manufactura de prótesis, emprendedores e instrumentación biomédica. Con un campo de trabajo que va desde el sector salud, automotriz y aeroespacial. Para más información, comunícate al teléfono 229-9400, extensión 7146, o consulta la página www.upaep.mx. Ingeniería biónica, calidad de vida en tus manos. Hazlo tuyo, hazlo UPAEP. los animales. Zoológica es el espacio radiofónico que esperaba. esperaba. Escúchanos a través de un radio. Todos los jueves de 11 a 12 horas a partir del 2 de febrero. Aquí nos escuchamos. El sonido de lo natural está de vuelta. No te pierdas todos los martes en punto de las 13 horas tu programa BIOS. Con nuevas secciones, entrevistas, enlaces telefónicos, transmisiones en vivo y mucho más. BIOS, el sonido de lo natural está de vuelta. No te lo pierdas, todos los martes en punto de las 13 horas. UPAEP, rumbo al 50 aniversario. Misión. Misión. Crear corrientes de pensamiento y formar líderes que transformen a la sociedad en la búsqueda de la verdad, integrando fe, ciencia y vida. Valores. 
Junto a la verdad, el bien y la belleza, nuestra universidad sostiene como valores rectores la dignidad de la persona humana, la libertad, la solidaridad, la subsidiariedad, la congruencia, el respeto, el amor y la justicia. Visión. Somos una comunidad universitaria fraterna, congruente, alegre y comprometida, que es referente en la conjunción del pensamiento humanista, cristiano y las ciencias, que forma integralmente líderes con alta calidad profesional y compromiso social. Contribuye a la transformación de la sociedad con propuestas pertinentes, orientadas a la consecución del bien común. Tiene presencia e influencia en los ámbitos local, regional, nacional e internacional. Centra la gestión en la persona y optimiza los recursos al servicio de la misión institucional. Líneas rectoras. Atreverse a vivir congruentemente nuestra identidad, como ejemplo de virtud en el servicio, con respeto y amor al prójimo, para la transformación social en orden al bien común. Privilegiar a través de la academia la formación humanista cristiana en busca de la excelencia científica y profesional con pensamiento universal y trascendencia social. Crear sistemas académicos de auténtica pertinencia social a través de la docencia, investigación y extensión para enriquecer la cultura y participar en la solución de los problemas fundamentales del país. Involucrarse en la formación y desarrollo intercultural de la comunidad universitaria a través de ámbitos y vínculos de internacionalización. Lograr ambientes de confianza, colaboración y servicio dentro de una cultura de austeridad, transparencia y evaluación. UPAEP, rumbo al 50 aniversario. Hello there, we're back at Culture Shock. So we're back to Culture Shock and we have our guest. Her name is Veronica. Can you introduce yourself, Vero? Hi. <laughs> um, I am Veronica and... Hi, Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> I am 23. I studied to become a lawyer, but I'm also an English teacher. All right. <laughs> How long have you been working? Oh. Well, I've worked since I was 14, but as an English teacher, when I was like 17 or 18, I can't remember quite well. So I must believe that she's Teacher Veronica or Teacher Vero. Yes. Vero. Okay. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Teacher Manny, for the <laughs> information. <laughs> yes. All right. So uh, we're talking about culture appropriation, and you were here in the booth of the last segment. So can you have an idea of what cultural appropriation is? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, When, when I was invited to talk about it, I kind of got the idea that it was like something positive. But as I heard you, <laughs> I'm like, you are taking the negative side of it. So I am kind of confused. Like, I understand it's when you, when somebody acquires or follows or does uh, traditional things that do not belong to their like native country or something like that. Is that true? Yes. Yes, but there are the two ways of doing it. <laughs> If you do it with the real meaning and all the traditions that it carries, it's acculturation. If you just do it because it's funny or, as some people say, exotic, then it's cultural appropriation. Ah, okay. I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, I mean, well, the like positive side, he was telling me, how do you call that? Acculturation. A acculturation? Acculturation. Yeah, well, I think it's something that we face every day since, well, ever since the boundaries from countries were open. I mean, like, uh, it was easier for us to travel and also because of uh, the trade and all the things we had, like uh, social media, Facebook, all those things, there is not like option, it is not quite optional, we just have it. So do you think like before social media, before the world became more globalized, it was harder to make cultural appropriation? Yeah, for sure. 
I mean, like, I got a nephew who's like 10 or 11, and since he started having a computer, well, not exactly own it, but <laughs> using it, uh, sometimes he comes with ideas to me, like, oh, I want to see those Japanese cartoons. I don't know how they are called. Anime? Uh, yeah, anime. <laughs> and, and he loves Legos, and then he's starting to build Chinese houses. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, how do, where do you get those ideas from? And I know <laughs> he. <laughs> Internet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's his answer. His answer, you know, and we don't quite let him go surf the net by himself. But he's like, oh, but I saw it in YouTube. Like, they got <laughs> this YouTuber called blah, blah, blah. And he's talking about that in his blog. And I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> but nice for you. <laughs> but yeah. is he like following the meaning of the things he's doing? Or is he just like doing it because of a trend? Uh, most of the time, he does it just because it's like fashion. And also because he's like quite interested in doing stuff from the internet. So he doesn't really get it. All right. So, yeah, that is pr practically one of the most basic get ways to get to the cultural appropriation. We don't really know the meaning, but we're just doing it because it's easy to because do. Because it's trendy and snuff yeah. and stuff. Do you remember the name of this, I don't know, challenge uh, that the went viral? Challenge? No, that <laughs> went viral, I don't know, like one or one and a half years ago mm. about having a camera and then you would put like with, your, with a marker, a lot of marks in your face. Then you put the, your hand over the camera, and then you went hands oh, out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. I don't remember the name of it. I where there have been lots of challenges now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's what we were discussing yeah, about. Yeah, we it. have, like, a lot of challenges. But, yeah, I remember. It's like, like, you put yourself, like, ugly, and then you put your camera, like... Your hand over the camera. Your camera, and then you're not ugly. Exactly. And that meant, in the beginning, that was going to be, like... Be yourself, you are not that bad, you have a, <laughs> a great person inside, <laughs> and that you can be anything <laughs> or anyone you want to be. But then the meaning really changed, and now it's like, I'm ugly, and then I put the f the my hand over the camera, and I'm going to become beautiful. So that's not the point, and that was not the point, and that's cultural appropriation. Well, actually looking or saying somebody looks ugly or beautiful, it has to do with cultural appropriation. Because our, our idea of looking beautiful or ugly has to do with uh, the models or whatever we yeah, see on the internet or something like that. Well, <laughs> yeah, <I'm because> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because come on, you saw it like <laughs> in your third class of yeah. communication, <laughs> cultural <laughs> communication. But I never re like related this with cultural appropriation. It has to do with it, like. Uh, going very <laughs> very back in uh, in time uh, when the Spaniards hadn't conquered Mexico we had no idea like about horses or things like that and then well about many things <laughs> and and then when they got here then we changed our perspective you know like probably uh, looking ugly hadn't to do with whatever they thought it was ugly or something like that it depends whatever is beautiful or ugly for me it's different to a person in the other part of the world yeah it's a concept of beauty like a long time ago we didn't even know like why the skin was a thing like people with white skin will exist because probably we're uh, like dark skin yeah. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or, I'm, or I'm just following the idea here. Yeah, it, yeah, it's something <laughs> like that. Uh, because like even Mexicans now are like, oh no, if it it's if this person has darker skin, that's not beautiful or something like that. Europeans don't usually have dark skin. I well, mean, they do changing. now because they migration and refugees. Yeah. So, what kind of cultural appropriation have you seen here in Mexico? Mm, the Halloween. Yeah, we were talking about that. <laughs> um, I don't know what else. Um, I can only think of it. <laughs> <laughs> what about Christmas? Oh, uh, well, yeah. And also Thanksgiving. Like, for example, I got family in the USA. And then when they come to Mexico, they are like, oh, yeah, the turkey day. And we were like, what? <laughs> uh, I mean, I know what it is, uh, but we don't y usually celebrate it here. We don't have Thanksgiving here. No. And should we d should we have or, no, or not? 
I don't think so because it's not something that has <laughs> origins <laughs> or, uh, in our culture. Sure. We should respect it, but we shouldn't like follow it because it's trendy. Well, I follow it because I got an American friend and <laughs> she invites us to our, her house. And so we have Thanksgiving because of her, but we understand the meaning. It's not like, yeah, let's have the turkey day just because, you know, we have it because she has a reason and it's her tradition. Okay, so you adopted that culture, but you know the meaning behind. Yeah, I mean, we don't do it without her, <laughs> 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 because it's not fun, you know, uh, but, uh, because we don't do it. I mean, if I started gathering my family and, oh, let's have our Thanksgiving day, <laughs> they would be like, what? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so yeah. So without her, we don't celebrate it, but if she's in Mexico, when it's Thanksgiving, we have it, but because it's her, what she believes in or what she celebrates. Yeah, I think that's good. It could be like cultural appropriation because you don't know the real meaning of it, but you do it because you want someone to be happy about it. Or Well, remember. I know what it is about. Well, <laughs> you, but as an example, other people don't know the real origin of it. Yeah, but as, uh, as she was telling, like, you don't do it just because it's fun. Like, you don't gather your family and say, let's have a Thanksgiving. Yeah, you have to exactly. do it because you have an American friend. All right? U.S. American. U.S. <laughs> American. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're studying cultural diversity. You should know. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think as you were saying, like, you, if you do it just for fun or you have no idea about it, then it doesn't make sense like many other things we do that don't make sense <laughs> just because we don't know. Like what? Uh, like, for example, buying very expensive phones, such as iPhones. I mean, I have an app iPhone, but <laughs> it, was <a> <laughs> it was a present. <laughs> it's not what you think. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's just crazy. Like, every year they sell a more expensive cell phone, and many people want to have it just because it's the most sold a uh, brand popular in the usa brand. and popular and they got new stuff and whatever but for me they all look the same <laughs> <laughs> so uh for example you do things that you've seen around and you think they're uh, exotic then you use them for example clothing or hairstyle or even makeup have you ever done it um not really uh but Probably not voluntarily. I mean, not because I wanted, like clothes, for example. I buy what it's on the stores. <laughs> 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 and yeah, that comes because of trends and unpopular things. Yeah, but you don't say like, oh, this looks exotic, I'm going to use it. No, I'm not that adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, damn it, I cannot make the other question <laughs> then. But <laughs> if you ever going to do that... Uh, would you like kind of research the history before or would you will you just do it like oh it looks exciting I'm going to use it mm, probably sometime um, mm. or you will make like a research of the culture I would probably like it's something very different from what we wear or what I usually see around uh, I would ask why I mean I'm always asking everybody why <laughs> they do things you know so I, it would be difficult for me not to uh, just do it do it just because probably I do it with food for example like when I go to a restaurant and they got international dishes uh, then I go like oh this sounds tasty I, I'll try it <laughs> and I have no idea if it is uh, a traditional dish from any country or something like that or the ingredients or I just go f and choose it because it looks nice on the pictures or something like that All probably right. I would do it with food <laughs> <laughs> good and so you're saying you think that appropriation it's like a uh, I forgot the word um, it's not the same as diversity yeah why can you re can you repeat the question <laughs> <please>? <laughs> Appro cultural appropriation is the same as diversity no definitely well let me think about it that's a n <laughs> that's a nice question <laughs> what do you think Vero Mm, I don't think it is. Why? <laughs> uh, diversity is like... <laughs> 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 I'm voting for no. <laughs> and wait for him to say why. <laughs> okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's diverse, but it's multi -cultural.
multiculturality and it should be multiculturalism. I don't know if you get quite the difference. <laughs> no, <laughs> not really. As an example, multi it's a, it's a tough word. Multiculturality is when a lot of cultures stay in the same place. And that's it. Multiculturalism is when they get along together and they respect each other and they can change their traditions but in a meaningful way. So I think that cultural appropriation is inside of multiculturality and not multicul multiculturalism. Alright. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, it kind of I'm makes processing sense. it in my mind. Let me say it in Spanish <laughs> because it's kind of. <laughs> multiculturalidad es cuando muchísimas culturas se quedan en el mismo lugar. Mm -hmm. Pero hasta ahí. Mm -hmm. Multiculturalismo es cuando esas culturas se llevan bien, respetan sus tradiciones y comparten esas tradiciones, pero de una manera respetuosa y sabiendo el background que tienen. Ya, yeah, I get it. Entonces yo siento <laughs> que cultural appropriation está en la parte de multicultural. Multiculturalidad, uh -huh. pero lo más apropiado sería en aculturación, que está en multiculturalismo. Ok. <laughs> Professor Victor in the house. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, I'm reading here, like, if a way of making cultural appropriation is engaging with other cultures, but not in just, like, aesthetic way. All right, not just doing it, like, for looking good. Ok. For example, like, US Americans. Thank you. <laughs> are really like uh, interested in this what is called black culture you kn you know what black culture is not really do you i get an idea but i don't want to say it <laughs> <laughs> like uh, this group yeah, of yeah, african like americans the music, the music yeah. that they they have their food their slang their traditions yes, and slangs yeah. uh, and those kind of things so what would an, um, a us american would look like if they loved not only like the culture but also the people who portrays the culture if they what if they would love not only the culture but the people who portray the well, culture. but unlikely what happens is that they just do i mean not only them but everybody just starts doing different things to their culture just because it's fashion and they have no idea what it's going on Uh, I'm a secondary a school teacher and my students sometimes have no idea of what they are doing. <laughs> like today I asked them about the Cinco de Mayo and they had no idea. They were like, I'm going to parade today in Atlixco. <laughs> I teach in Atlixco and Atlixco took part in the battle of the Cinco de Mayo. And they were like, why are they doing it today and not tomorrow? Is it because tomorrow we have no classes? So no, <laughs> that's <laughs> <into the> messed <laughs> up. Like. <laughs> and I'm like, really? And I keep asking them those tricky questions you know like why are we doing this and things like that and they have no idea they are just like oh I saw it on the internet uh, I heard it from this youtuber and things like that because youtubers have to do with it too um, I personally don't follow any youtuber <laughs> but uh, most of them are like traveling around the world and talking about things and presenting it just as cool they show what's cool and that's what people like what's cool and fashion and trendy and they do it just because they want to be cool too so they don't really explain most of the times uh, what they are doing uh, or I mean the reasons of what they are doing or taking part in yeah what they what, yeah okay I was going, uh, to, well, that well, well, I was going yeah. to that point like why do you think that they only follow what it's cool Like when someone says that this is cool and this is not, and when do they start to like uh, avoid their focus or, or their concentration in what is really important? For example, like education. <laughs> yeah, for example, like they see there are a YouTuber that says the history of I don't know, I don't know England, <laughs> and but there's also a documentary. They would choose the YouTuber guy. But maybe the YouTuber like is missing a lot of important points of the culture, or and the, and the parts of history, and they will follow the YouTuber. Is that is not good, of course. But why would they follow the YouTuber and not the real information and the real sources? Because YouTubers make it more dynamic and they're funnier. But what happens if they're missing a lot of important points of the history and they're showing it badly, teaching it badly? Then they just change the surface, surface, and then and they don't get. 
any <laughs> deeper into what it really means. But it depends on the person too. Like if you give it to a child, then the child would be like, oh yeah, this is nice. Oh, boring a uh, documentary, you know. And I think that's what you got to teach your children or your students. And then that way they are able to make that this uh, to make that to differentiate those things. And why do they think like the documentary is boring for them? Because they are. <laughs> like <laughs> honestly, would you, would you, what would you do? Like see a documentary or follow any YouTuber? If I want to know, <laughs> if I want to get certain information, then I would definitely watch the documentary. Yeah, for sure. But, but yeah, if you just want to like pass the time. Well, but there are other YouTubers, you know. There is only yeah. not those. I have no idea their, of their <laughs> names, but not, 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 not only them exist, there are other uh, blogs or whatever they are called that are uh, promoting nice stuff. Yeah. But it depends <laughs> on the person. The person has to do the assessment of yeah. what they want to do or not. Obviously, for, I don't know, a seven-year-old chick, uh, cat, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> I mixed up children <laughs> and kid. <laughs> a seven-year-old kid. Obviously, it's going to be better for him to, I don't know, just turn on the computer and look it up instead of turning on the TV, go to, I don't know, Discovery Channel. But you don't have to necessarily go to the TV. You can also find it on the internet. Please name one kid. <laughs> or a book. <laughs> <laughs> Please name one kid that goes into the web just to look for a documentary. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they, they are not. <laughs> not in Mexico, that's for sure. <laughs> I think culture acquisition has to has to do or has a lot to do with social media. Yes, definitely. Because that's what we are seeing all around. Like, just you would you share information about the Cinco de Mayo or would you post a funny selfie? <laughs> See on your contacts. <laughs> like I have the right to, re <laughs> to remain silent to this, to this question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you see. I mean, you don't see uh, like uh, interesting quotes about history or things like that. You're sharing the funniest story that happened to your friend or something or like memes. that. <laughs> <laughs> memes. <laughs> and his name is yeah. Jones. I mean, I do it too. You, you know, like I am not uh, sharing <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that on the internet. But how many people does it? Or how many people would read it or share it or anything like that? Yeah, just a few. And that depends also on your contact list. If you don't have a lot of people that share that information, then you will never get access to it on the media. Yeah, and that's it's easier just to find out the funny and cool stuff there. Because that's Obviously. also what they let you see. Yes. Wow. My mind is blown. <laughs> so, would you have? do you have something to add? No? no yeah. Really. Well, mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> no, it's a rainy day. <laughs> it's <laughs> a rainy day. <laughs> so, unluckily, we have to go, guys. But we'll be back next week with our last show. Too sad. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for coming and thank you so much for listening. Make sure to listen on, on the last on the last show. It's going to be and very special. We're going to have some surprises. Yes. So we'll see you next <laughs> week. Thank you see very you. much. Bye bye. Next bye. Week. Bye. Hasta la <laughs> tuvi. Yeah. <laughs> Gracias. Yeah, creo que ya. <laughs> This was Culture Shock, a program to get in touch with your identity. See you next Thursday. Open your mind and rediscover your world. Urradio. Urradio. La licenciatura en Humanidades y el Departamento de Capacitación y Desarrollo de Talentos. En colaboración con Brigadas Móviles de Cultura AC. Te invita a los meses de marzo, abril y mayo al ciclo de conferencias y talleres. Desarrollo de competencias multiculturales.